Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Feliz Sabado. Are you all happy to be in the house of the Lord today? If you are happy and delighted that God has spared your lives to be here, say amen. And if you know that there is no place like this place, say amen. And if you are online and you know you should be here, plan to be here next week. And we are hoping that we'll be able to have more persons here next week, Sabbath, so that we can celebrate together, we can worship together, we can lift up the name of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. What do you say? Yes. Has God been good to you? Yes. Has God been good to you? Yes. Have you been good to God? It is such a joy to know that we serve a God who is a good God. He's not just a God, but he's a good God. A caring, compassionate, merciful, loving God. That's the God we serve. And so we are here today on this, the Sabbath of the Lord our God, to worship him and to praise him. I welcome you from far and near. Welcome... Indeed, to the Toronto Perth Seventh-day Adventist Church worship service. And I pray that as you join us from far and near, you will sense God's presence. You will be closer drawn to Jesus Christ, and you will fall in love with Jesus one more time. A few things I want to share with you. Number one. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll be having our prayer and fasting. It begins at 7, goes through to 12 o'clock at noon. That's tomorrow. And uh, we are going to be focusing in terms of the theme, overcoming the forces of evil. And so you need to be on tomorrow morning at the regular Zoom line for this very special prayer and fasting service. And in light and in the context of prayer, right after service today, the women of this church will stay behind for a short session of prayer and reflection. Right after the service today, the women of this church are asked to stay behind as the Women's Ministries Department leads out in this in conjunction with the prayer ministries in spending some more time with God. P please bear that in mind. Uh, last week I gave, a, or I, I gave out and asked you to take the survey. As we are seeking to serve the church better with our, our online worship services, only a few persons have gone online and have taken the survey. Only a few persons have taken the hard copy and have taken the survey. We'd like to have more persons participating so we'll get a better response and we have a better understanding as to what we can do to improve our online worship service. So we have more surveys, hard copies for you today. So if you are interested in getting or in doing the survey, it's short. It's not long. It's very short. If you are interested in doing the survey, may I ask you just to raise your hands so I can see you? If you are interested in doing the survey, can we get some surveys in their hands, please? Raise those hands. As we get some surveys in your hand, and those of you who are online, it is available online. Look online right now. You will see the guide. And you can tap and proceed and fill out this survey. It will help us to improve and to serve one and all much better. Our team here, that's the media ministry team, is about improvement. And so we are asking you to fill it out so that we can serve you better. At the end of the service today, 
There is someone at the back on that side. At the end of the service today, as you are leaving, you can give these surveys to one of the deacons or deaconesses or to one of the elders or the pastors or to anyone from the media room. Give it to them and they will be able to analyze and be able to know what things we can do better to serve our church. Last week, we told you about the Pathfinders taking part in the, in the Canada-wide Pathfinder Bible experience. I, I am here to let you know, indeed proudly, that our Pathfinders did well again. Of the 394 churches in Canada, not Ontario, no, Canada, only 18 churches got to the union level. So our kids did extremely well by placing in the top 18 in all of Canada. Let us continue to celebrate our Pathfinders and the leadership of our Pathfinders. And as you look on the screen, you will see them. I'm not sure how many of them are here, but if you are here, uh, just raise your hand. Any other Pathfinders are here at this time, just raise your hand. Um, can you just come up here, please, all the Pathfinders, all those who raise their hands, just come up here if you were a part of that, that uh, program last week. Just come up here, please, so we can see you in, in the flesh. And is the coach here, Sister Melissa, are you here? Or Brother Gavin, our director, are you here? We are so proud of, of these folk. They taught the Ontario Conference, you know, all the churches in the in Ontario, Toronto, Perth came out first. <laughs> Say it like you mean it. <laughs> Brother Rudder, they don't, they don't know how to say amen. Oh boy. Oh boy. Look at them. And if you notice something, they all look handsome. And they have also stood, of course, Ascending order. That's, a, that's wonderful. Congratulations to you and continued success as you continue to serve as a Pathfinder here at Toronto, Perth. God bless you. And we have to work on a special incentive for these four. What do you say? Oh, boy. I, I said we have to work on a special incentive for these folk. Something that they can take home from Toronto, Perth. We have to spend the money wisely. We don't have much money, but we have money for them. Say amen. amen. So we'll have to find that out, work on that somehow so that by the next board meeting, we can approve the funds for them to get something. It is not, it's not an ordinary attainment, and we are proud of our youngsters. They came out third Right across, right across Canada, to God be the glory and the praise. Next week's Sabbath is, is the Easter weekend. But at 6 o'clock, there will be a special drama production that you can't afford to miss. So you can't be anywhere else next week's Sabbath. You have to be here. So if someone is giving birth, It can't be next week's Sabbath. <laughs> Sister Brooks, you heard me? It can't be next week's Sabbath. It has to be some other time. Because everybody has to be here next week's Sabbath. And so at 6 o'clock, we are going to be having a very, very special drama production by the members here at Toronto, Perth. And uh, we know that God is going to bless. We're encouraging you to invite non-Adventists to be here too. Not, not only Seventh-day Adventists, but non-Adventists are also invited to be here. There is a special guest today in the person of David Bake, who is from, who is from Toronto, LPC downtown. Uh, David, are you here? Please relax. Just want you to wave. If you're here, David, where's David? Okay, thanks. So good to have you with us. And next week, you have to be here next week. 
And there is Brother Service is here. He, he's from Downsview. Where is Brother Service? Next week you have to be here. So these two men, and you are responsible for getting others to come along. So you are charged with that responsibility to be here. And Sister Lida, you have to be here next week. And Okay, you have been here before, but you have to be here next week. And then there is uh, uh, Sister Cindy Phipps, who is here. She is from the Kingston Seventh Adventist Church in Kingston, Ontario. Can you say amen, brethren? She is someone that we have been very close to as we pastored in the Kingston Church. She is the aunt of our dear Pastor Whitney Phipps. And um, she is she's from uh, Trinidad originally, but has spent most of her life here in Canada. And she's a retired teacher out there in Kingston, Ontario. We are so happy to have you with us here today in worship at our church. The Simpsons, of course, Brother Simpson lost his dear wife last week, Sabbath. He was here in church, and later on Sabbath, she passed. The service of celebration and thanksgiving will be April 10, which is not this coming Sunday, but the other Sunday, uh, or Monday. Originally, it was Sunday. Um, on the on the Monday, the 10th, it's going to be right here. We'll keep you posted. We're encouraging you to be out at 11 o'clock for that service. They're going to be viewing at 10 o'clock. The service starts at 11. We'll keep you posted on that. Let me thank those who joined us on, Wednesday, on Thursday night at our family ministries seminar. We give God thanks for the, those who attended and um, there is the call for us to have it here the next time around and still carry it on Zoom. We will talk about that. You will hear more about that by next week or so. The brought back box is back. Say amen. So during the praise and worship is, is a time when you can take up your special offering and place in the brought box. Please. Listen, somebody, you don't know anything, you know. You were born here. Okay. <laughs> That's, of course, <laughs> of course, brother. <laughs> uh, brother Bernard, I give you a pass, sir. I give you a pass. I credit you. I credit you for having been born there. But having lived here most of your life, you know, it's somehow, somehow, I will still give you a pass. I credit your mother and your father. Okay, the, there's going to be a special domino tournament here on the 22nd of April. Keep that date in mind. You'll hear more about that. Keep that date in mind. On the 22nd of April, on a Saturday night, of course, after sunset, you know. But we'll give you an exact timing by next week's Sabbath as to what time it's going to be. A April 3, two days from now, will be the wedding anniversary of Sister White. And she wants me to announce it. Sister White, you want to stand so they can see you? Because she's standing alone because her husband is in Jamaica. But she wants you to know that her, her anniversary is on April 3, and her husband's birthday is on April 4. That is the king himself, King Cyrus. So if he's a king, she has to be the queen. You can't have a king and a commoner. So it's the king and queen. So April 3, April 4, let's continue to pray for these individuals. A couple of persons were asked to take part in the NCD survey. As a couple of persons haven't yet done it. All those persons who were asked who haven't yet done it, I'm going to ask you just to, just to see me in my office right after church. I'm going, to be get, I'm going to be giving you the survey to be done today. 
so that we can send it off to the conference and we can be good to go to hear what the assessment is from the survey. God has a special plan for us today. God has placed us here for a purpose. And we are here to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us put aside anything that can take us away from worshiping God. Let us keep our focus on God alone. And if we do that today, we'll be closer drawn to him. God bless you. Welcome again. This is Toronto, Perth, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Good morning to everyone. Morning. Happy Sabbath to you as well. We join in worship to celebrate another Sabbath day. Can you hear him? Okay. We join together to worship another, celebrate another Sabbath day. Please stand for the call to worship. Please stand for the call to worship. And the scriptural reference will be taken from Psalm 118. I'll have taken ju uh, just a portion of it because it's a long psalm. Okay, I read. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and hast become my salvation. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Save now, I beseech thee. Lord, save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be the, he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Thou art my God, and I will praise him. Thou art my God, and I will exalt him. The final verse. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever and ever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is your call to worship.
bow your heads with me for prayer. Our God and our Father, Our God, our Father, we want to thank you for this moment. We want to thank you for your holy Sabbath day of rest. We're gathered here today not because of our goodness or our righteousness, but because you have allowed us to be righteous through your sacrifice on the cross. And so today, Father, as we worship you, take us back to the cross where it all started. And help us, dear Father, to see you and behold you on the cross. Help us to experience what Mary and John experience as they look upon you nailed to the cross. But Father, I pray that you will take us beyond there to the grave, and to that great Sunday morning when you came forth with all power in your hands. We look forward, Father, to the day when you will return, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are God. Take full control of this worship experience now. Saturate this place with your Holy Spirit. And I pray, O oh God, that we will send the highest praises to the throne of God, that angels will fold their wings in adoration, O oh Father, for the worship that will be coming from this place. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord.
Precious Lord, lead me on. Now, I know these songs give you what? Precious memories. Amen? Oh, yes. Precious memories. Yes. Precious memories. Unseen angels sent from somewhere to my soul. Come on, let's sing this one together. Memories. 
Precious memories. Amen. Amen. Do y'all remember this one? We, you know, sometimes we, we neglect some of these hymns, don't we? It's been a long time we've done some of these hymns. And um, remember this one, Wonderful Words of Life? When was the last time you sung that one? Huh? Come on, it's been a long time. No, man? Isn't that right? Come on, let's sing that one. Let's sing that one. Here we go. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful words. Come on, everybody, open your mouth and say, words of life and beauty. And sing the second verse. Come on. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all. Here we go. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all wonderful words of life. Yes. Sinners. Sinners to the loving call. Yes. Wonderful words of life. Also freely. Also freely. Take that third verse, come on. Sweetly echo, here we go, and. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. 
Call for pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life. Come on, ladies. Jesus only saved. This place. He is good. He is good. It's now time for prayer. I hope you enjoyed that. You know, we have to keep these songs. You know, some of our younger folk, they don't know these songs. And we have to keep them going. That was what, that's what brought us to where we are today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus, I come. It's time for us to have prayer. Jesus, I come. Thank you, praise team. I'll be honest, just now when they were singing Precious Memories, all I saw, you know, like all the people that we have lost, you know, like I've seen Sister Emmons, Brother Scantyberry, I see Elder Clark, Sister Ivy Simpson, yes. Sister Verge Simpson, I saw Brother Pusey, you know, I saw Sister Porter, all those people I saw just standing up and singing. And you know what, church? They have passed on, but it's up to us yes. to be faithful and to hold on. Yes. You know, I'll be honest with you. I'm always honest when I come up here and I take this mic. I know I have five minutes, but I have to be honest with you. Yes. Like, I know we all dressed up and we look good, but like sometimes inside we're a mess. Yes. And I don't know about you, but I know that I have a lot to work out. And I know that sometimes my life is a mess. But I'm just happy that I know Christ Jesus. And I'm, I'm here today to, to pray for the church. But I want you guys to pray for me. And if you, want, if, if you know you don't have everything figured out, you could stand to your feet with me. If you know that you're blessed to be here with me, I want you to stand with me as we pray. And let's just seek God face in prayer. Let's pray. Most righteous and eternal Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, Almighty God, as I'm here this afternoon or this morning, Lord, I'm here only because of your grace and your mercies. And Lord, I'm just asking to forgive me of my sins and all that I've done wrong. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, I pray that this prayer will be heard and I. Almighty God, I want to put your church before you in a special way. Lord, we have, we're losing a lot of our church members. Lord, it seems like there is debt every week. Somebody's passing on. But Lord, the ones who are alive and here, Lord, I pray that you may help us to just look at the times that we're living in, Lord. 
Lord, help us not to try to get ourselves right. But Lord, help us to look to you to help us get right, Almighty God. Lord, by ourselves we cannot do anything, Almighty God. But Lord, with you we can do everything. So Lord, I pray that you may help us to stop worrying, Lord. Help us to stop trying to do things that we cannot do on our own. But Lord, help us to cast all our cares upon you because you're first care for us. Almighty God, even though our life is a mess, Almighty God, but we know, Lord, within our mess, Lord, there can be a message for us. So, Lord, continue to use our life as a light for others. Lord, may you just continue to just bless us, Lord. I pray for the families in this church. We know the enemy is attacking the family, Lord. We know the enemy wants to divide and conquer. But, Lord, we know that we are more, we are more, than, we are more than conquerors in you, Christ Jesus. So, Lord, I pray that you may give us the strength that we need to overcome in this time that we're living in. Lord, we see the madness around the world, Lord. We see mass shooting, mass killing, Lord. People are going into schools, killing children. Lord, all through life, we know kids are always off limits. But, Lord, we know the enemy is running wild right now, Almighty God. We see children killing their parents, parents killing children. Lord, we're living in times like we have never seen before. And, your, and your, in your words, it, t- it told us that, Lord, times like this will be, will be happening. And, Lord, it's happening. So, Lord, help us to take stock of the time that we're living in. Lord, help us to draw closer to you. Lord, I pray that you may help us to remain faithful. As Sister Simpson always say, remain faithful. Just be faithful. So, Lord, my prayer today is for all of us to be faithful. No matter what the situation is, no matter how stressful it seems, no matter how messed up it seems, Lord, help us to look to your face, Almighty God. Help us to hold on to your unchanging face. Lord, help us to be faithful to you, Almighty God, because in the end, we know that you'll be faithful to us. So, Lord, I want to pray for Pastor Nicholson who's going to bring the message, Lord. I pray that you may be with him, Almighty God. I pray that you may strengthen him. He's a young man. Lord, I know that he, he has his own trials and his tribulation that he's deal with. But Lord, I pray that you may hide him behind the cross, Almighty God. I pray that you may prepare a message today that when we hear it, Lord, we may not, we may not leave you the same. Lord, may you continue to be with those who are sick, those who cannot be here today. Be with the halls, Lord. Be with Sister Martha Brown. Be with Sister Katie Watson. Lord, Sister Watson, be with, be with all our members who are, who are sick in hospitals and nursing homes who can't be here. Lord, I want to pray for the Simpson family who is grieving. Remember the Arison family. May you continue to be with them. Lord, may you continue to be with your church. Lord, we know that your church will always stand. But Lord, I pray as members of your church, help us that we may be able to stand as well, Lord, because we know that your church will not go under. But Lord, I pray that you may help us to be faithful that when that, when that glorious day comes, Lord, I pray that all of us here can be standing in that sea of glass praising and rejoicing with all the members that we have lost. But Lord, until then, help us to be faithful to you. Be with us. Be with the remainder of this service, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I Good morning, church. We have to remember that we are stored for the Lord. And we want to thank you. There are five characteristics of faithfulness of a good steward. Humility, trust, forgiving, obediency. If we can practice these things, we can be good example for others outside. Our deacons and deaconess will wait on us for the Lord, for the Lord, tithes and offerings. Our most gracious Father, we want to thank you. You have given us another opportunity that we could be here in your presence today. Father, forgive us of our sins. 
and we want to pray for the offering of for today. May it go for the furtherance of your word. In this we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. Please stand for scripture reading. The scripture reading is taken from Numbers 14, verse 1 to 18. I'm going to be reading in the New International Version. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by, our, by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell, down, fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun and Caleb, son of who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel, only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone. But the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of, the, of meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all the signs I have performed among them, I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them. But I will make you into a nation greater and stronger than they. Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear about it. 
By your power, you brought these people up from among them, and they will, in, and they will tell the inhabitants about, of this land about it. They have already heard that you, Lord, are with these people, and that you, Lord, have been seen face to face, that your cloud stays over them, and that you go before them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. If you put all these people in, people to death, leaving none alive, the nations who have heard this report about you will say, the Lord was not able to bring these people into the land that he promised them on earth, so he slaughtered them in the wilderness. Now may the Lord's strength be displayed, just as you have declared. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. That's the word of the Lord. The family members of Sister, ha of Sister Harrison would like to thank the church for the support they gave on Sunday to the funeral service of Brother Harrison. The family of Sister Juliet Craig would like to thank the church for their support on Thursday in Brampton at the, full, at the, fr at the funeral service there too. Let us continue to support each other. As was said by Elder Bailey, we are having challenging times with these debts that have been occurring one after the other, but we trust God. And we know that God continues to watch over us. God continues to care. Let's not be despondent. Let's trust God even through hardships. Our word today comes to us from our assistant pastor, 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 Pastor Patrick Nicholas, or Nicholas Patrick. <laughs> when you have two possible surnames, or two possible Christian names, this is what happens. Pastor has been here for some time at our church and has served well, and loves to preach the word, and we know that God has given him a message for us for the hour. We will listen attentively as God, God's mouthpiece shares what God has laid on his heart. Let's whisper a prayer for him that God will in, indeed use him to speak with confidence and conviction. That the words we hear will not be his, but the word of the Lord our God. The sermon is titled, Maybe It Didn't Start With You. Maybe it didn't start with you. And the message that comes before is a message in song. And it is, oh, it is Jesus. May God bless us today as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Sabbath once again. Come on, folk. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. You know, we're still on the theme of songs we've remembered back in the day. How many remember? Oh, it is Jesus. Do you remember that one? We want you to sing along with us. Is that all right? We're going to do this one at the beginning, and then I'm going to ask you to join us near the end. If you want to stand to your feet and give him praise, you're more than welcome to. Whatever the Spirit feels, feels you to do, you can do. Jesus say We're 
going to do that again. Oh, 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 it's Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. In my soul. For I have. For I have touched the hem of his garment. And his We're going to do that one more time. I don't feel like the whole church has heard this. Come on, let's sing it together. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's Jesus, Jesus, it's Jesus in my soul. Never did me any good. Then I heard Jesus. <laughs> he was passing by. And I decided to give him a try. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. one more time said I tried him all that I could and it seemed like nothing did any good then I heard Jesus <laughs> he was passing by
bless the name of the Lord with me. I said, bless the name of the Lord with me. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, let me hear you say hallelujah. If you're happy just to be alive, let me hear you say praise the Lord. If God has been good to you, clap those hands and give God some praise in the house today. If you're happy to be in the land of the living, just hug your neighbor and say, I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy just to be alive. And I'm happy that you are my worship partner in church today. Amen. 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 This church is a blessed church. You know, God has a way with this church. In the midst of our grieving and mourning, God sends us worship experiences like these. And it's, it's a lot to give God thanks for. Today, we mourn those who have passed away. But we rejoice in the fact that one day, we will meet them again. In a better place. When we will sing these old songs over again when we, the worship service will even be greater, Brother Everell. And we will sing precious memories as we look back in these moments and where God would have brought us from. I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord today to be worshiping God. This week, Pastor Swaby and myself, we were from one funeral home to another. But today we're here to worship God. Let us continue to pray for the bereaved families and to pray for the church family as we go through this time of grieving. But we grieve not like those without hope because we hope in the Lord in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me also express my um, quote of welcome to all those who made it out to church today. For those who are watching online, the experience in the sanctuary is much greater. If you can get to church, please do so. Because the energy in this place is to another level. Sister Sharon, it's good to see you in church. On a Sabbath day, worshiping, good to see you. It's good to have you here today. To all our visiting friends, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you for choosing Toronto, Perth, the place of rebirth. There's no place like this place in this city. There's no greater church in this city like Toronto Perth. Say it like you believe it. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I want to thank my, my lead pastor for his kind words of introduction. Um, God has blessed us with a man of God for this time. You know, the timing of God is perfect. He's just the person we need for this season. And we thank God for him. He has been busy from he got here. And we pray that God will continue to strengthen him and to use him um, for his glory. I hope to continue to hold up his hand as he do the work of ministry um, for the glory of God. And also to his beautiful wife, Sister Donna, who is always here in support. We give God thanks for you and for your ministry so far. Give it up to our First Lady. Amen, amen, amen. She used to pray for me even before she got here. While I was running around from church to church, she would be praying for me. And I give God thanks for her. God bless you, Sister Donna. God bless you. Sister White is celebrating her anniversary. Is it today, Sister White? The third. Okay, okay. But you start to celebrate from now. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up to Sister White, you know, King Cyrus and Queen 
Lady White, for the anniversary. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 <clears throat> All right. I'm going to invite you to stand with me as we want to turn your attention to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 14. I want to read verse 18 in your hearing. When you have a chance, you can read the entire chapter. Numbers chapter 14, um, verse 18. <clears throat> the Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love, and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. I probably need to repeat that. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of the fathers. You hear this, fathers? To the third and fourth generation. If you could bear with me today as I preach on the subject, maybe it didn't start with you. Maybe it didn't start with you. This is part one of a part two sermon. So bear with me today. Let us pray. Father, all things started with you. Except for sin. Today, Father, as we are gathered here, your people to worship you. Forgive us of our sins, O oh God. We are here to worship you, but we are also here to be transformed in your likeness. Many of us are here with trauma. We're living under curse. Many of us are sad and depressed. We battle things inside which are too painful, dear God, to utter. People see us, but they don't know what we are carrying. I want to pray for such a person today, God, that through the words in this passage, you will give us hope. Be with every worshiper. I remember those online and those who are in person. As we revisit this text together, take full control of the preacher today, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. It didn't start with you. <clears throat> the following story offers a vivid example of how events in the past can affect the present experience more than we realize. Jesse hadn't had a full night's sleep in more than a year. His insomnia was evident in the dark shadows around his eyes. But the blankness of his stare suggested a deeper story. Though only 20, Jesse looked at least 10 years older. He sunk onto Mark Wallen, his counselor's sofa, as if his legs couldn't longer bear his weight. Jesse explained that he had been a star athlete and straight A student but that his persistent insomnia had initiated a downward spiral of depression and despair. As a result, he dropped out of college and had to forfeit the baseball scholarship he had worked so hard to win. He desperately sought help to get his life back on track. Over the past year, he had been to three doctors, two psychologists, a sleep clinic, 
and a naturopathic physician. Not one of them, he related in a monotone, was able to offer any real insight or help. Jesse gazing mostly at the floor as he shared his story. When asked whether he had any idea about what might have triggered his insomnia, he shook his head and said, sleep had always come easy for me. Do I have a weakness today? Then one night just after his 19th birthday, he woke suddenly at 3.30 a.m. He was freezing, shivering, and able to get warm no matter what he tried. Three hours and several blankets later, Jesse was still wide awake. Not only was he cold and tired, he was seized by a strange fear he had never experienced before. A fear that something awful could happen if he let himself fall back asleep. If I go to sleep, I will never wake again. Every time he felt himself drifting off, the fear would jot him back into a wake, uh, sorry, back into wakefulness. The pattern repeated itself the next night and the next night after that. Soon, insomnia became a nightly ordeal. Jesse knew his fear was irrational, yet he felt helpless to put an end to it. Mark Wallen listened his counselor closely as Jesse spoke. What stood out for Mark was one unusual detail. He had been extremely cold, freezing, he said. I began to explore Jesse and ask if anyone on either side of the family suffered a trauma that involved being cold or being asleep at 19. Jesse revealed that his mother had only recently told him about the tragic death of his father's older brother, an uncle he never knew he had. Uncle Colin was only 19 when he froze to death checking power lines in a storm just north of Yellow Knife in Northwest Territories of Canada. Tracks in the snow revealed that he was struggling to hang on. Eventually, he was found face down in a blizzard. Having lost consciousness from hyperthermia, his death, Sister Marva, was such a tragic loss that the family never spoke his name again. Now, three decades later, Jesse was unconsciously reliving aspect of Colin's, Colin's death. His uncle, especially the terror of letting go into unconsciousness. For Colin, letting go meant death. For Jesse, falling asleep must have felt the same. Making the connection was a turning point for Jesse. The process of healing could begin, according to Mark, his counselor. Sounds like science fiction or superstition. I would say yes, Pastor Swaby, if I didn't read the literature and researches trying to explain this phenomenon by Rachel Yohanda, professor of psychiatric and neuroscience at Mount Sinai School of Medicine in New York. 
She and her team believe that generational PTSD is inherited rather than occurring from our being exposed to our parents' stories or our deal. Maybe this discovery explains how through one man's sin, sin enters the world. Walk with me through the corridors of this text. Starting in Numbers chapter 13, we have the well-known story of what is inaccurately called the 12 spies. I rather to call them the 12 scouts. Sent by Moses to explore the terrain and take possession of the land. Ten came with a negative report. Hello? I said, 10 came with a negative report. Only Caleb and Joshua were positive. And I don't know about you, but I think we need more positive people in the church of God than negative people. We need more positive messages and news more than negative news. We need people who can see the cup half full instead of seeing it half empty. Oh Lord, have mercy today. Uh, um, so Joshua and Caleb came back with a positive report. They were positive, um, Pastor Swaby, that they could conquer the inhabitants of the land. They could take possession of the land, the land that is flowing with milk and honey. You see, what we find here is something reminiscent of a psychological condition which predates those who were living. The fear of the ten scouts is similar to that of Jesse. You see, their ancestors were in search of food when they ended up in Egypt. I know your Bible, so you can follow me. And later, the Egyptians did what? They enslaved them. Notice, uh, um, um, Brother Humphrey, that what they lamented to Moses for in the next chapter, chapter 14, verse 2. Notice what the people lamented to Moses. The Bible says that all the people grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt. If only you left us there to die Egypt here is the word, is the key word. You see, they were reacting to fear of enslavement which their ancestors went through. Even though they were no longer enslaved, the trauma of slavery lives on. You see, what is even more interesting is that further down in, in chapter uh, uh, um, 14, verse 18, Moses pleading with the Lord, being a good pastor, Moses is pleading with the Lord not to destroy the people for their lack of faith and doubtfulness. He co quoted a line from Exodus 20 verse 5 that says, the Lord is what? Slow to anger, abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. It seems like the Bible is establishing some generational carryover of sin's guilt. Some injustice which might be ratified in future generations. Maybe it didn't start with you. Maybe your promiscuity didn't start with you. Maybe it didn't start with you. Maybe, maybe your desire for power control didn't start with you. Maybe you are dishonest and telling more lies than you tell the truth, but it didn't start with you. Maybe you are hard on yourself for things you can't explain, intergenerational symptoms. Maybe your loneliness didn't start with you. Touch somebody and say, maybe it didn't start with you. Ah. <laughs> if any of this sounds familiar, 
you could be experiencing what is called repetitive compulsion. Repetitive compulsion. Here it is. According to one of the foremost experts in trauma, Mark Wallen, in his book, It Didn't Start With You, where I get the, 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 sermon, the, title, the, the title for the sermon, he posits that a well-known documented feature of trauma, one familiar to many of us, is our inability to articulate what happens to us. I'm going to help somebody today. Not only do we lose our words, but something happens with our memory as well. During a traumatic incident, our thought processes become shattered and disorganized in such a way that we no longer um, recognize the memories as belonging to the original event. Instead, fragments of memory disperse as imagery, body sensation, um, words are stored in our unconscious, unconscious and can become activated later by anything even remotely reminiscent of the original experience. Once they are triggered, it is as if an invisible uh, rewind button has been pressed, causing us to react to reenact aspects of the original trauma in day-to-day -day life. All is not lost. A secret, a secret language of our suffering lingers with us. Unconsciously, we find ourselves reacting to certain people, events, or situations, in all familiar ways that echoes the past. This Sigmund Freud called traumatic reenactment or repetitive compulsion. It is an attempt of the unconscious to replay what's unresolved so we can get it right. This unconscious drive to relive past events could be one of the mechanism at work when families repeat unresolved trauma in future generations. Carl Jung believed that what remains unconscious, unresolved, does not dissolve or go away or fade into oblivion, but rather resurfaces in our lives as fate or fortune. It didn't start with you. Today, if you haven't received it as yet, let me tell you, we're talking about trauma and generational curse, as some people would say. You see, trauma is knocking on the door to be opened. It is screaming to be heard. It begs recognition for healing. I told you the past is not dead. It is not even the past. We have to shed light of awareness on our traumas. No wonder Jesus said, whatever is in the dark will come to light. You see, the children of Israel in the wilderness are reacting to past traumas of their ancestors. This is why God had given them 600 and something laws and ethical code to help them to live above their traumas. Constantly, God, through Moses, had to remind them of the miracles which brought them out of Egypt. Hence, the feast days and Passover celebrations. Can I take it home to us today? Some of us are fighting battles which predate our existence. Circumstances and events which were set in motion before your arrival. I'm going to help some people today. Some of us are dealing with original trauma which happened before our parents met. Not everything that is affecting you started with you. You might be suffering from unresolved trauma from your grandparents' parents. 
Lord have mercy today. Some husbands are paying for the crimes of some ex-boyfriends. Some wives, some wives have to work overtime to get the trust of a husband who was cheated on before her. Don't say amen, wives. <laughs> some of us are punishing people who have nothing to do with our trauma. You see, could traumatic reenactment be responsible for a lot of the abuses between parents and children? Husbands and wives, siblings, teacher, student relations. Could it be, church family, could it be the reason why pastors and members sometimes don't get along? Is it possible that the enemy is using our ancestral history to his advantage against us? I, 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 I'm to divide and conquer us with things that started before us. Could this explain why we dislike people up and meeting them without exchanging a word with them? Wave to somebody and say, it wasn't me. Just like Shaggy, it didn't do, I didn't have anything to do with you. I am not the source of your pain. I'm sorry, but I don't deserve the blame. It didn't start with me. Maybe it is time we stop and consider that we could be fighting the wrong person. Maybe it is time to do therapy and get to the source and origin of our pain and stop punishing people who are trying to love us, people who are trying to care for us and aid the healing process. Hear me, brothers and sisters, I understand. I understand because I know pain. I have experienced pain. I understand that some things are too painful to try and understand, Pastor Swaby. Too unbearable to deal with. Too shameful to expose to the truth of life. But can I ask you what Jesus asked the sick man at the pool of Bethsaida? Would you like to be healed? Would you like to be free from your suffering and your pain? Would you like to be free from your trauma? the things which are affecting you, would you like to be delivered from that pain? Your trauma is not beyond the healing power of God. If he could heal a man born blind, then your trauma is no big deal for God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. If he could stop a woman from bleeding, then with just a touch then surely he can stop your tears. If he asks a dead man to come back to life, surely he can raise you from the pit of despair and depression. You just need to call out to God and watch him raise you from that generational curse that you are experiencing. Oh Lord, have mercy today. Oh, help me, help me, Jesus. Help me, help me, help me. You see, God can take you from darkness um, to light. He can move you from death to life. Stop reacting to trauma and get proactive about it. Face your reality. Start the process of healing by seeking God's help. He is a present help in the time of trouble. The psalmist say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Can I tell you, even though you walk through the valley of despair, the Lord is with you. He is night, he is near to the brokenhearted. If you just cry out to him, he will come true for you. Let, let me tell you, this is one of the most important sermons I will ever preach.
the late Carl Jung was convinced of this idea when he wrote, I feel very strongly that I am under the influence of things or questions which were left incomplete or unanswered by my parents and grandparents and more distant ancestors. It often seems as if there were an impersonal karma within a family, which is passed on from one parent to children. It has always seemed to me that I had to complete or perhaps continue things where which, which previous ages had left unfinished. The scouts in the text, it seems, were continuing a journey that started with their great, 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 great grandfather Abraham. Take to take possession of the land that God promised to Abraham. Take possession of Cana. Moses charged Joshua with the responsibility of leading the people into the promised land. And something as great as he was, he had left unfinished, unresolved after trying for 40 years. Uh, um, this tells me that there are some things which we have to leave for the next generation to complete. Missed your shout right there. I said there are some things that we will have to leave for the next generation to complete. Because we can't do everything in our timeline. Because God is so big and God's plan supersedes us. And so we are just on God's timeline. We are not on this earth forever. We are just passing through. But while we pass through, we have to understand that God is in control. And so we have considered the psychological explanation. Let's now contemplate the theological understanding. And, and if you miss anything I've said so far, make sure you write this down. What is unresolved will revolve or evolve. What is unresolved will revolve or evolve. See, when those in our family have experienced unbearable trauma and have suffered with immense guilt or grief, the feeling can be overwhelming and can escalate beyond what they can manage or resolve at the time. It is human nature when pain is too great, Elder Anderson, people tend to avoid it. Do I have a witness in church today? Yet when we block the feelings, we unknowingly stunt the necessary healing process that can, he that can lead us to a natural release. Sometimes pain submerges until it can find a pathway for expression or resolution. That follows and can resurface as symptoms that are difficult to explain. You ever experience something is hard for you to talk about it? It's difficult for you to articulate it? I don't know if you were watching the trial with, uh, uh, um, when Judge Clinton Newman said before sentencing Alex Murdoch for murder of his wife and his son that he has never seen in his 20 years where the murder convict can go back to the moment of the crime. Even if they confess they did it, they cannot retell the experience, the trauma, it's too dark, it seems, for light. Too painful to relive. And this is why many people avoid it. 
I, I've spoken to many people who have shared their experiences with me, and I said, why don't you do counseling? They say, Pastor, I've tried, but I can't continue. It's too painful. So the Bible consistently, however, refers to, this is it, the third and fourth generation. What is the reason for the third and fourth generation? I, I, I've considered long and hard on this. And I remember the first time I, you know, this came to my awareness about the sins passing on to the third and fourth generation. I said, that's unfair. Why should I suffer for something that previous generation, the people before me did, that I have nothing to do with? But saturated in the Torah, the first, the f first five books of the Bible, is, is this whole third and fourth generation. Is the Old Testament suggesting that sin can be passed down from one person to another? Generally, no. But the consequence can. The effects can, as in the case of Adam and Eve. The first century Jews believed this when they asked Jesus regarding the man born blind, whether this is the sin of his parents or his own which caused him to be blind. The Jews, after rejecting Jesus, said to Pilate, let his blood be up on us and our children. So they believed that something about your sins is, can carry over. But here's what I discovered. In studying, it is commonly held that a custom becomes a memorial by virtue of having it existed for a hundred years or more. It is a memorial because the normal lifespan of human beings is 80 years. And so a hundred year is outside of the memory of any human beings currently living. Miss your shout. According to Father um, Clad Ripperger, God will allow evil to extend in the family line for only up to a hundred years. And then he will normally bring to the surface something which will force the remedying of it by a family member. Mr. Shout again. As an act of grace, God delays or suspend the consequence of the sin for further generation so it can be ratified. Because, hear this, because at the moment of the incident, the consequence is too painful or overwhelming for those involved to bear. Hence, God in his mercy allows the passage of time for restitution. It's a chance for the children to correct the sin, confess the crime, pray for healing, and banish the demon which was introduced into the family line. And this is why God leaves it to the third and fourth generation. Because when it happens, it is too painful for those um, involved to deal with. And so it is not a curse when it is transferred to future generation. But it's an act of grace. So hear this, you may be dealing with things which predate that happened before you. You see, God chose you because he trusts you with battles. He wants you to be the agent of healing and warrior to defeat the demon and bring him glory. Your suffering is not a curse, but a gift from God. Hello, somebody. Your curse, your suffering is not a curse. It is actually a cure. There is purpose for your trial. There is meaning in your pain. 
you are here today because God has a plan for you. And so you don't need to fight people in church because we have bigger demons to fight. We have principalities to defeat and a generational curse to cure. And this is what Paul meant when he said in Romans 3 verse 25, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed unpunished. And so God, when Jesus came to this earth and he died on the cross, he died for the sins that happened before his arrival on the earth and the sins that will happen after. You see, Jesus' death on the cross ratifies the sin of all before and after him. The sad news is that through one man's sin entered the world, but the good news is that through one man obedient, all would be made righteous through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so it didn't start with you, but I'm here to give you hope that the reason why you are suffering something that happened before you is because God wants you to fix it. Daddy was a junker and rum head, but no wine shall touch your lips. You shall be sober like a cucumber. Um, grandfather um, couldn't read, but you shall be a professor. Your father was a womanizer, but blessed be the name of God. You shall have only one wife. Your grandmother or your mother was an only fan, but you shall be a Proverb 31 woman. Your grandmother was pro-choice, but you shall be pro-life. Uncle was a thief, but you shall be a lawyer. Everybody in your family die early from cancer, diabetes, but you shall outlive that. You shall live and you shall not die because to you, God can create a cure. It's to you that God's going to deliver the family. It's to you that God's going to break the generational curse. God has a plan for you in your family. You are not here by accident. You are not related to the people that you're related to by accident. God has a purpose for you. You shall live and not die because you are a friend of God. Diabetes took your mother, but not you. Cancer took your father, but not you. You shall conquer it in the name of Jesus. Because God is about to flip the script. He's about to turn a new page in your family line. He's about to write a new chapter in your generation. God's going to turn things around. It didn't start with you, but guess what? God's going to make it stop with you. You're going to cure people. God handpicked you for this purpose, to be an agent of his grace. You shall be the wounded healer. Wealth is coming to your generation. Prestige is coming to your generation. I, I, I cannot tell you all the things that God has in store for you, but a litany of pastors are coming to your generation. Doctors are coming to your generation. Lawyers are coming to your generation. Service workers are coming to your generation because God's going to flip the script. Like Abraham, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because of you. You might be the first pastor, but surely not the last. You may be the first doctor, but not the last. The first teacher, but not the last. Because through you, God's going to do a great thing. He's going to reverse the curse. going to bless you. He's going to give you double for your trouble. He's going to give you double for your trouble. You're going to break the curse. You're going to break it. 
It is you who will enter Canaan and take possession of the land flowed with milk and honey. It doesn't matter what happened before. What is important is what God is doing now through you. Take me to my final point and then I'm going to grab my seat. The process of healing, it didn't start with you, but it will end with you. I said it didn't start with you, but it will end with you. And here's how the healing process will begin. When we put words to our pain, we are able to name the symptoms, we are able to name the cause and symptoms of our trauma. Then the healing process can start. This is what happened to Jesse when he, when he was able to make the connection with his uncle, the healing process could start. Words can hurt. They can also heal. Words are powerful, you know. No one that the book of John describes Jesus in a philosophical terms as the logos, the word. Notice in the text with me about our Asian ancestors that it was when they articulate their fears that a solution was provided. They said, we see giants in the land, and we look like grasshoppers in their eyes. When they were able to name their fear, then they were able to receive a solution to the problem. The 10 spies were reacting to trauma of the past, fear, unresolved in their ancestry. Caleb and Joshua saw an opportunity to correct fear with fate. They wanted the cycle not to continue. Where their parents failed, they wanted to succeed, young people. Our words are like trail markers, leading us to the prey of our sorrows. They give hints, clues to the source of our pain. Words are triggers to set the race to run backwards to find the root cause of our trauma. For the scouts, Egypt was the root word. Can you take it down a little bit, um, Malachi? I'm going to share the story with you quickly. I was about, couldn't, I was about 14. I was coming from church one night, but ev every Saturday night I would um, go to this place where you know, I would pick up fish and bami for dinner. My mom used to get fish and bami from this lady. Um, it's not as good as Sister Tate's own, but it was good. <laughs> and so my dad was taking, taking, taking us home from church, and I had to stop and get, to get the fish and bami. So when I went to the lady, um, they didn't have the sauce ready. You, you know the escovite sauce with the on onion and, and carrots and all? The sauce wasn't ready, Pastor, but Knowing Mr. Patrick and that he doesn't like to wait, the lady said to me, just wait, just wait another 10 minutes and it will be ready. I said, I can't wait. You know, my dad, is, he's not going to wait. So the lady was like, oh, what's wrong with your boy? Wait on the thing. So I, I hit my teeth and went to the car, didn't wait on it. And my dad said, man, you know, I, I, I wish I would, you know, I'd want some of the fish and bami. It smells good. So I'm like, um, but I'm not sure they have any more. <laughs> so anyway, he took me home and he went back to the place. And by this time, the sauce was ready. And the lady said to my dad, you know, John, I told the boy to wait just 10 more minutes for the sauce. And he hits his teeth. <laughs> About half an hour later, my dad was at the, at the, at the gate. <laughs> and he, he, I don't know, um, they're not doing this anymore. But, but Pastor Swaby, back in the days, they will send you to pick the whip. 
Do I have a weakness in church? <laughs> and, and, and oh boy, I got it that night. Fast forward a couple years later, I was dating. And the young lady who I was dating, I was over by her parents. And she was, you know, saying something to her dad and, and her dad. They were talking and she hissed her teeth to her dad. And I was, I, I grew in rage after. I was like, how, how is it you're going to hiss your teeth to your dad? I was upset. But for her, this is normal. And I overreacted. For her, it was aggression anger, and all of that. And I wondered to myself, Sister Harriet, why is it I reacted like that? It, it was a trigger because of what happened in my experience. I thought I had long forgotten about that experience, but it lingered because what is unresolved will resolve, will revolve. James understood this when he said, confess your faults one to another. Jesus forced Peter to confront the betrayal when he asked him three times after, love me more than these? The principle is to put words to pain so healing can begin. You see, God wants you happy in the true sense of the word. He wants you um, free, delivered, ch transformed, Holy Ghost filled. But you need to endure the cross. Walk through the Gethsemane of your trauma and relive the crucifixion of past experiences so you can re resurrect to newness of life. Prior is good. But your prior needs skin in the form of a therapist or a counselor. Then you can face people who hurt you, left you for dead, abuse your innocence. You can befriend your enemies, pray for them that use you. Like Jesus on the cross, you can say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they have done. God will give you the grace to forgive people who predate you. You are healing your generation for years to come. You will save them the pain you conquered. You can look the devil in the face and say, that doesn't bother me anymore. Poke me, Pokemon. That doesn't faze me anymore. Come with that temptation. I've been there, done that. What's next? I can end at the cross today. Because even though it didn't start with you, it shall end with you. And that's the message I want you to leave with today. It didn't start with you, but let it end with you. Be the one to break the generational curse so you can change the generation to come. Can I tell you about a man that it didn't start with but ended with? Can I tell you about a man who came into this world even though he had no sins? He offered himself up for the salvation of humanity. God sent his only son to finish something he didn't start. On the cross, he suffered my trauma. He suffered our pain. He is able to be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He understands my pain because he has been there, experienced that. He can intercede as our high priest because he has done it. He lived our trauma. But the great news is he's making all things new. It didn't start with him, but it will end with him. Salvation will be ours.
the Apostle Paul said, there is coming a time when there will be no more pain, no more trauma, no more depression, no more despair, no more suffering. For the former things that have been passed away and behold, God will make all things new. If you want to end the cycle today, can you stand to me? Can you stand with me to your feet? As pastor get ready to pray, um, to pray. I want the praise team to sing something as we prepare our hearts to receive the prior to consecrate this service. Jesus, keep me near the cross, near the cross. There, a precious fountain, free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. Let's sing together. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There. make a quick appeal today you're here you have experienced trauma before or maybe you are going through it right now there are things that you're dealing with that you can't explain you don't understand the things that you inherited circumstances and situations in which you were born in you had no control over it didn't start with you but it can end with you. I want you to come to the altar today. Pastor is here. He's going to pray for you. You are saying today, Lord, I want to break the curse. I don't want this thing to continue no more. It must stop with me. Today, it is, I am I'm conquering this thing in the name of Jesus. I, I, I'm defeating the devil in the name of Jesus. He will not use this thing to plague my family line any longer. I'm giving it to Jesus. I, I want it dead today. I want it conquered today. This thing has played me for too long. I'm leaving church a new creation, a new man and a new woman. Can you press, press, press together? We're all in this together. Hold somebody's hand, squeeze somebody, hug somebody. Let them know that you are there with them. You're praying together. What is most sacred is most common. What you may be experiencing, somebody may be experiencing the same thing. The last night we met as elders and we prayed. And we shared our walk with God. You'll be surprised that many of us are experiencing the same thing. But today, you want to say, I want to be free from this thing. I want healing. I want deliverance. I don't want my children to go through this. I don't want my grandchildren to go through this. We are giving it up today. We are putting it at the foot of the cross. We are leaving it at the altar. We are giving it to Jesus. Near the cross, a trembling soul. Near the cross, a trembling soul. Love. Yeah. 
you to bow your heads with me at this time as we pray to a God and Savior. Gracious God, omnipotent God, omnipresent God, omniscient God, immutable God, kind and compassionate God, we pause at this juncture in our service to lift your name above every other name. It is with certainty that we approach your throne knowing God that nothing is impossible for you. We have been here worshiping, praising your name, lifting up your name, Rejoicing in your free and full salvation. But we pause, Lord, to acknowledge our weaknesses, our frailties, our past tragedies, our traumas, our distresses, our grief, our pain, our losses. And we pause, Lord, to acknowledge them as being real, not imagined. And because we, Lord, acknowledge them as being real, we know we can come to you with all seriousness and claim freedom from the calamities, from the effect that such experiences have brought upon us. We ask you, Lord, to break the chain, loose us from the past, and create a newness for us, your people. Cause us, Lord, to know 
that the past is the past and you are the God of the future. You're able to use the past experience to teach us, to instruct us. But we are willing, Lord, to move beyond the past and to find solace in your free and full salvation. Lord, we know that the devil's aim is to keep us entangled and chained and shackled in the past experiences. But, oh, God Almighty, God who is altogether a God of freedom, the God who has the might and the power to loose shackles and chains, the God who is able to do what we ask of him, we ask you, dear Jesus, to loose us, to free us. We can have a new start, a new beginning, and no need to look over our shoulders. God, we thank you for the spoken word today. We thank you for using your mouthpiece today. We thank you for speaking to him today. Today was a day of worship and praise. We thank you for the praise team who didn't just sing, but they sang. They didn't just sang, but they lifted up their voices towards heaven. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we have come forward believing that in coming forward, we are committing ourselves to something new. And even for those who might have stayed where they are, you know their hearts, you know their situation. I pray salvation for them. I pray victory for them. I pray relief for them. And there are those here today, Lord, whose heart might not yet be right with you. They might not yet have given their hearts over to you as they ought to. And they are contemplating giving their lives to Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, for them today that you'll open their hearts to a new understanding that you are the God who saves from the guttermost to the uttermost. You will come down to where they are and lift them up above where you want them to be. So we pray for them today. There are those online who are experiencing their own struggles, their own difficulties. They've had their past experiences, encounters. Do the same for them, I pray, Lord Jesus, as you are doing for us here. Cause them to know that you have started a new experience for them. An experience in trust and confidence in God. An experience that will see them growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is made possible because you overcame on the cross. This is made possible because you gave your life on the cross. This is made possible because freedom was wrought on the cross. Is at this cross where we are saying, keep us near the cross. Keep us near the cross because there is victory in the cross. Hear our prayer we ask today. Answer our prayer we ask today. And save us ultimately in your eternal kingdom. We ask in the name of the Father. We ask in the name of the Son. And yes, Lord, we ask you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let the worshipers, the saints of God say amen. Amen. God bless you. Hug somebody on your way back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Just want to wish everybody a happy Sabbath. As we uh, as we leave, we're gonna sing some songs. So have a happy Sabbath. Take care. Happy Sabbath. Some old time songs. You know the theme today. Old time songs.
command my hands to praise the Lord. There you go. Come on. Watch this now. I command my hands. 